thank you. Uh, this is my first visit to Brisbane and what an occasion I'm getting a, a Drupal South community here. I'm from the GovEc community and I am now part of this community. Uh, so this keynote, may be, mainly I'll be asking, uh, talking about like how the open source is helping Hackathon to promote innovation, uh, mostly from GovEx side. To start with, just uh, to give a bit of brief introduction about myself, uh, as uh, uh, the introducer already uh, introduced myself, I am actually a solution architect from the Department of Premier and Cabinet, have been in South Australian government for around 10 years. Uh, but I am representing GovHack here today. I'm the board director of GovHack and the data lead for the national team. Also, uh, a little bit of uh, what I have done in uh, last many years, uh, winner, winner, finalist, and semi-finalist of many hackathons like uh, Australian E-Challenge, Pitch at Palace, uh, Blockchain Innovation Challenge back in 2019, uh, Teradata International Challenge, Telesta Innovation Challenge, Seek Fox IoT, and many more. I couldn't list them all. It, it will cover like multiple slides. So I'm pretty much very habituated with the hackathon world. And that mainly brought me here, that involved me with GovHack. I also am an alumni of Carnegie Mellon University and the Founder Institute uh, back in US. So it's going to be a little bit of long presentation. So that's why you don't get bored. I'm just saying what's coming. And uh, you can tag into, okay, that's the specific point I went to here, or you just continue, okay. Uh, so I will start from what is GovHack, uh, how GovHack runs, what we do, uh, what make us passionate. And uh, GovHack is about open data, so a little bit of about open data, and uh, how the open source is supporting Hackathon, and from GovHack perspective. And what open source tools are used in GovHack? and some innovative, exciting projects with a video at the end. So wait for it. OK, so the GovHack is the largest uh, data hackathon in the Southern Hemisphere. We call it uh, as the Festival of Ideas uh, because uh, uh, we pretty much produce ideas from the, from the two days hackathon. It's not two days, a weekend long, like 46 hours. And there are so many innovative ideas came out from GovHack last 13 years. Many of them came up as a startup, and some of them were implemented in government. A little bit of history about GovHack. Uh, GovHack started back in 2009 uh, from Gov 2.0 Task Force uh, initiative from there, uh, started by John. Uh, then it was like a uh, gone slip for a couple of years, and it wake up after two years and in 2012 by Pia Andrews. Uh, she launched a voluntary community-driven fun hackathon, and from, from 2012, it's uh, moving on. Initially, it was run by a committee. Then uh, we formed an organization, and now it is running by a board, and a lot of volunteers across Australia and New Zealand. It's 13 years for GovHack. Uh, we have organized hundreds of events in Australia, in New Zealand, uh, that definitely produce thousands of really valuable projects. And many of them, as I mentioned earlier, became a startup. Uh, many of those ideas have been implemented in different government, uh, government agencies uh, that created uh, definitely the value we provide to citizens as a government. As I said, uh, GovHack is a 46 hours weekend hackathon event. It starts on a Friday evening with great event, like everyone comes every, uh, from different states. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a local, that means like every state and territory we run on the same day, on the same night, and same weekend. And definitely it starts a bit early in New Zealand and it starts a bit late on Western Australia. But it's uh, local time based, so 7 p.m. at New Zealand, it starts. And for Western Australia, who is join, joining from Western Australia, it's 7 p.m. from them. And it's a collaboration 
uh, with multiple uh, industries people coming together, ideating throughout the weekend. Most important thing we say, it's fun. Yeah, there are prizes, good prizes, prize monies, medals, uh, media coverage, but what we value it, it's fun. Because we have seen returning GovHack participant coming again and again. Sometime we say GovHack is addictive because once someone join on that GovHack, they keep coming and wait for the next year. The deliverable of GovHack uh, is a three minute pitch video uh, published in some uh, YouTube or any other uh, video streaming platform. Uh, well documented project description uh, solving a challenge and the evidence of uh, work that can include code base, that can include the uh, designs, uh, figmas, uh, wireframes. The project is uh, judged by our judges, uh, judges not from GovHack, the judges from sponsors. So who are our sponsors? Our sponsors are all government organizations, government agencies. Uh, Sometimes we say like corporate organization like AWS, Microsoft, they also come, but GovHack is specifically for government. So we expect more government organization to come in and that happens every year from state territories and also from the federal government and New Zealand. And the awards happen in every state. Uh, there is a state award night where the state winners and the runner-ups get the prize and medals from there. And we have a red car national red carpet event every year. Uh, I'll just return back to Adelaide. I'm from Adelaide, I, I forgot to mention. I'll return back to Adelaide and go to the red carpet award, which is end of this month. So this is a very uh, gorgeous event, uh, usually from uh, government high officials and, and uh, ministers, they usually come up there to hand over the prizes and the medals. Sorry, a lot, a lot, lot, of about, lot about GovHack because I just want to set the stage and what GovHack, what we do. Uh, now I'll jump into the next part, uh, a little bit more, sorry, for GovHack, I forgot. So the GovHack 22, uh, it was very special for us because it is a weekend event. Uh, People come together, sit together, collaborate together. But last two years, we missed most part of it because of COVID. So we had to quickly move into an uh, online event. So like 2020, it was all online. 2021, it was few estates online. Few estates, we organized it to have an in-person event. And just two or three days before it, oh, there's a lockdown move to online again. So it was challenging for us during the COVID. But this year is very special for us because uh, we came back to in-person event. That opens the collaboration. That opens the meant human interaction. And that creates the uh, innovation. That creates lucrative projects. Another thing we initiated this year that was collaboration with the universities. So we are bringing a lot of universities uh, within our platform uh, because we know in Australia, currently there's a skills gap. So a lot of universities taking the opportunity to use GovHack as a skill development opportunity. And one thing COVID gave us, that is online platform. So we identified we are now matured, thanks to COVID, to run the event online as well. So this year we tried hybrid. That means people from another countries can also join and create a team. And the people who are in person, they can collaborate with them uh, using Slack, Zoom, and many other platforms. And from this year, we started theme-based GovHack event. That means that all the challenges will come around that theme. So we went for ESG this year the environment, social, and governance. Now I'll slowly move into the so, uh, open source area. Uh, Hackerspace is our main platform where we publish our challenges, where uh, the participants submit their projects. 
also register for the events. The interesting thing is this hackerspace is an open source platform. The code is available. Anyone can use this to create another hackathon like us and use the same platform. In fact, uh, we got it from one open source project and it has been developed for the last four or five years. Now it is much matured. Now let's jump into the open data because GovAC is a competition with open data. So uh, how many of you know about open data here? Any idea? Okay, definitely. <laughs> okay, so the open data initiative mainly uh, in Australia, it got popular from the Gov 2.0 initiative uh, where we know government has a lot of data inside, uh, but definitely that's not open for people to use and to ideate for businesses to use them and create new products, new ideas. So last 10, 12 years, government started open up their data uh, and providing some level of data on open data portals so that we know what sort of data government has that can be used to create a new business, a new idea, or a new solution. So open data is definitely available online on different data portals. Are openly licensed, anyone can use that. Uh, data is mostly generalized, that means it doesn't include any personal information, mostly statistical information, sometimes open APIs available there as well. Uh, and a lot of uh, GIS data as well, uh, open data available in as a GIS layers in different portals. Published in open format, uh, machine readable, it CSV, JSON, many open formats that is uh, that can be used by a third party solution. And freely accessible that follows the fair data principle that is fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and uh, reproducible. As I said about the open data, every state and territory government, including uh, federal government, has their own open data portal. And in it's not only the state and territories, also the local government, city council, they also have their open data. That includes, uh, I can give some example like uh, lakes, where are the lakes, uh, their uh, GIS data is there. Uh, we worked with a really good open data uh, back in Adelaide that was a road crash data. I think now every state has a road crash statistics data that pinpoints which road, uh, which intersections are more dangerous. And this data is regularly updated. Uh, so maybe few months, they actually push another new data sets there. And as I was saying, the Open Data Portal, this is a snapshot of our uh, national Open Data Portal, data.gov.au. You see there are like 100,000 data sets there. It's a lot of data. And it's, you can find data related to anything. You just search, you will find that heaps of data there and you can use them. Uh, definitely uh, the data, data is on Creative Commons license platform. Uh, follows the FAIR principle as I mentioned earlier. And agencies, each, this data is published by agencies. Each agency publishes their data uh, on a frequent basis. And most importantly, we know like during the COVID time, what we did? Okay, go to the portal. Um, Search in Google, okay, how many cases in NSW today? How many cases? We were very interested about this. Even uh, news portals were getting up regular updated data from there. So I believe like we, we have seen uh, during the COVID, the open data got more acceptance across people and people get more aware about the uh, open data. And the COVID check-ins, uh, multiple states were seeing how many check-ins happening uh, every, every day. There's a very uh, uh, famous tool for open data portals. All state, most of the state territories use this second platform for their open data portal. The open data portals uh, images I was showing before, most of them are created by SICAN and this uh, open source product as well. It's a very famous uh, data management system, not in Australia, uh, US government, UK government, Canada, they also follow. They also use second platform as their open data portal.
hackathon. Uh, we all know about hackathon. Uh, and last few years, uh, we have seen an uh, increased number of hackathons happening because of availability of online. Many people opened a different hackathon in online because now everyone is used to work from home, work online, and that's why we have seen a lot of hackathons coming up. Hackathon is mainly ideation, creating a prototype, and some cases it goes up to uh, user testing level, getting the real feedback from the user that can create a really interesting product. Definitely time box, uh, sometime uh, one day, two days, sometime three days. The outcome is definitely a proof of concept, most of the accounts, because that, uh, as a time box event, you cannot create a product within a year or within a day or a two days time box time. So it comes as an MVP, definitely an incremental way of MVP, uh, mostly customer centric and product market fit and uh, proving a technology if the technologies work. And interestingly, Govac also follows this. Not the first image, the second image. So a specific challenge, a specific project can be solving four or five challenges published in GovHack. So maybe the first challenge is for the first image, the skateboard, and then they tag the project with another challenge, with another challenge, and this way, the whole product creates multiple solutions for multiple challenges. It's a one project that solves multiple challenges. And how open source is helping hackathon and how it can be more promoted. Definitely need the support from leadership from the organization. As I work, for, work in government, definitely in government as well, need the leadership and that visions go into open source. I use more open source products and use more open source platforms. Uh, and the team building exercise is very important. Uh, that creates the profession. Uh, there is another slide coming for professional development, which uh, facilitates the team building. And most importantly, where those ideas go, are those ideas are getting implemented, integrated, integrating into a product. This is very important. We keep track of our all GovHack projects and try to find out what are the success cases from there. Most hackathons run based on themes, as I mentioned, from this year we went for theme-based GovHack as well. Most sometimes it's only open source, sometimes it's economic recovery or sustainability. There are so many hackathons available now at this, at this time uh, with different themes. Uh, last few years we have seen themes around like COVID recovery and like ESG, as I mentioned, GovHack this year. GovHack drives a design thinking approach, creating a solution from a challenge statement. Definitely the double diamond of the first cycle, uh, the challenge and then the problem definition at some level of development, not a full full face product and not delivered. The deliver comes a post implementation of the hackathon driven projects. And open source in the hackathon projects, how it helps. Not definitely because it is a time boxed ideation event. So there is no time to reinvent the wheel. Using the, a project that is pretty much a starting point and then adding more codes, adding more modules with that, adding more features and that creates a solution at the end. And then using the libraries. In GovHack, not only GovHack, across all the hackathons is most of the projects are open. Uh, in GovHack, we promote sharing codes because it's open source. It should be open source. Uh, we use definitely open data, open APIs, a lot of open APIs coming up uh, nowadays, especially last two years, ABS, the Student Bureau of Statistics, they opened a lot of open APIs. So it's not only CSVs or data dumps. You can get real time data and our projects are using them. And then the open content. And like Drupal South community, like open source community, GovHack is a huge community.
the most important thing is like Govac has diversity. So the youngest one we have seen is a four year old kid like this size. And uh, the, the oldest one we got someone from eight, from their 70s joined there. So this is open for everyone from all ages they can come. Sometimes the whole family come, kids and husbands and wives and coming together with dogs and pets. And they spend a fun time over the weekend. And that's the beauty. When the diversity comes, the innovations comes from there because people have different minds. And also GovHack is for all the skill sets. It's not like a coders. It's not like a, someone from service design, someone from project management. A good team size can be five with some coders, with some service design, with some business people. Because we have seen they created a team with five people, all coders. They created an awesome project, but they didn't win because they don't know how to present it. So that's why a ideal size, team size is five with multiple skills, and that promotes the innovation. And uh, we have people from uh, diverse cultural background and from all the industries. Govac, not only Govac, all the hackathons have been used as a professional development opportunity in different organizations, uh, even in government at this, at this moment. Uh, corp corporate pro uh, professional development uh, programs mostly includes go uh, hackathon on their program. And some of the agile frameworks even promote hackathon as an innovation sprint. As I said before, uh, GovHack projects are all open source. Uh, they are findable, accessible, and all follows the Creative Commons license. Last 13 years, GovHack produced thousands of open source projects. Most of them are responsive web applications, a lot of data visualization because it's all about open data, a lot of IoT projects, some mobile applications also came up from there. Most of the tools used in GovHack are open source, so we can see uh, some of the logos. Uh, Drupal is also there. And these tools have been used by Gov hackers for the last 13, 13 years. Some of the few projects uh, I'm going to just quickly run through. Uh, a very good mobile application that is solving the taxation problem for people, uh, finding out the tax help centers. Another one I can remember, a real-time heat consumption website created by a team from City of Parramatta. That's not a coding project, that's very interesting. For revealing the historical figures using a board game that used, uh, I think, the South Australian Museum photographic data. But it's still open data, but a board game from there. And identifying the best place to generate the ocean current electricity. Some carbon dioxide emission metering tool, the second one is a project from Hobart, finding out the a tool that's driven by AI and machine learning and geosensing to find out the flood alerts in the city of Hobart. A citizen control identity platform, there will be a video coming later on uh, on this project. And uh, a smart trap to notify fruit fly movement, IoT project. How Govec promoted open source? Challenges by provided by our sponsors, they also judge them. Projects are solving those challenges and using open, various open source tools. And how GovHack is pro promoting Go open source is promoting adoption of open source tools and platforms into government. The success, a lot of successful startups came up from there. Government. Go, specifically for GovHack, government agencies publishing their special data sometime. So it's promoting publishing of open data to 
for for GovHack and is promoting publishing open data to, for the agencies and creating the adaption of open source product in public sector. One interesting project, another another interesting project is Patent Toy, Patents Toy. Uh, so it was from Canberra from back in 2015 uh, using the IP Australia huge data set and it was finding out searching a, a searching tool from their huge data set of okay if there is any patent available on there. Uh, you will get some of the uh, the link is there uh, some of the publication on that on that specific project and IP Australia implemented that one as well. That's a Drupal project back in 2018 using Gov CMS data visualization. It was a visualization tool of Gov CMS data provided by the challenges provided by federal government. Now the video time. Let's see if the video runs. Effective communication with the public regarding health advice and safe handling of data are more important now than ever. Government data and communication across state governments is fragmented, which can cause great stress for Australians, especially neurodiverse people or those with mental disabilities. Changing advice is hard on those who rely on routine, and this has real health impacts. Our solution, DigiKey, an online service that securely stores encrypted data keys and provides relevant messaging, and the DigiKey API, multiple related data sets orchestrated to provide an information powerhouse. The DigiKey Secure ID provides Australians control when sharing their personal information with government and business entities. The app uses an encrypted ID wallet and users can select which personally identifying information is included in the data package. The sign-in process is encrypted and signed with public keys so that only the authorised parties can access the data. Vulnerable residents are at risk of falling prey to online scams that have arisen out of COVID and this helps to mitigate this. The dashboard allows users to add, update and delete data, view restrictions by state, and this also leverages exposure site and sewage surveillance data sets to provide relevant alerts. DigiKey implements the DigiKey API to demonstrate some of the possible use cases. The API provides a platform for governments to provide important health information to Australians in an accessible and standardised format. Features include active and historical COVID contact tracing sites, vaccination availability and booking locations, and real-time restrictions by state. This demonstrates how state and federal government data can be collated, standardised and published via an open data method as a scalable solution. Some people simply don't have access to the internet, so DigiKey offers a physical card for some people who don't have phones or computers available. People can provide a form, submit their ID for verification, and opt to select which data keys to share by default. COVID-19 and our swift change to a more digital economy has turned the spotlight on how we can better provide information to residents across Australia. The DigiKey site and API will result in increased awareness, improved health outcomes, and provide benefits to a number of industries such as travel, infrastructure, healthcare, aged care, and education. Additionally, relevant and timely information will reduce fear and anxiety. No more checking lengthy contact tracing lists every morning. As state borders open up, DigiKey will help Australians keep track of what restrictions are across the different states and the measures they can take to protect their health and well-being. DigiKey aims to achieve increased digital and information security and better health outcomes for all Australians. Solutions like the DigiKey site are our path to freedom as we chart a course to the COVID normal era. Name of the agency, this project has been uh, used, uh, used as a proof of concept uh, on one of the government departments. And now GovAC 23, the, this year GovAC is already finished uh, back in August. The GovAC 23, how people can get involved uh, can be, it's a volunteer driven event. So can uh, anyone can get involved as a volunteer, as a mentor, as a participant, partnering, and definitely anyone on the sponsor as well, because uh, the sponsors keep us alive. Uh, the website is there, and uh, there is a support email. That's a red carpet event uh, back in 2018 in Sydney. So another one is go the next one is going to happen in three weeks time, as I said. And that's pretty much. Thank you.